Hello, and welcome to uh, Unity 3D C Sharp, and this is Lesson 21 on the switch statement. Now, what you're looking at is the uh, what we uh, had in our last lesson, uh, which was on random numbers. And let me just uh, uh, scroll along here to see what we had. There was our uh, class, and nothing's changed in that. And then we came down here, and we had where we were generating these random numbers. And uh, right here, generated these. And then we were making them so they had a range of values. And we were putting the, the, uh, the values of these random numbers and assigning them to the age and the health. And of course, what we had to do was cast them to integers. However, we had no way yet, at least in the last video, of having random uh, names for their races, like having orcs or humans or zombies or spiders, and we had no way of randomly generating their names. On this video, we're going to randomly generate their races and their names, and here's how we do that. We're going to go over here and look at Monster 8, and we're, 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 we have still the same thing that we had before, same class that hasn't changed, uh, we're still using the for loops and what have you. But now if you come down here and you see the race, we're calling a function. It's called get race. Oh, so we have a function here now that is returning a value. And hopefully you watch the, video, uh, the lesson on how functions return values. If you haven't, uh, I would suggest you go back and look at that. And it's calling another function called get name. So these functions must be returning strings because race and name are both identified up here in the class as strings. So that's what they need to return. Now, how are they doing it? Well, let's see. Let's let's look at the function get race, okay? Uh, or get name, I'm sorry. Okay, here's the function get name. It's a, a data type string. Why? Because it's going to generate a string. It's going to return a string, I'm sorry. And what it has in here is it has three variables. It has a string, a float, and an int. Okay. So let's see what's happening here. What we're going to have is a random number, a random value, just like we did before. That's no different. A uh, random number is going to be a, a, a random value. And there it is. It's a type float right here. Okay. That's not nothing different. Now, my selection is going to be uh, in a range, an uh, uh, integer number in a range. The lowest value is going to be a 1. The highest value, when our number is going to uh, have a range between 1 and 0 inclusive, remember? So when it's a 1, uh, this will be 1 times 6 plus 1 will be 7. When it's a 0, 0 times 6 will be 0 plus 1 is 1. So I'll have a range from 1 to Seven, okay, uh, and that's that's fine, okay. And so here's what happens: my selection has been cast. This has been cast to an integer right here. We did our casting right here. So my selection now will have an integer value of either one or seven, okay. So here is the switch statement. The switch statement is right here. This is what it is. This is the standard C-sharp uh, way of, of selecting things. And let's see how this works. What I've got is I've got inside here, inside the switch argument, I've got my selection, which is an integer. It will have values from 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and 7. And then the default, in case I want to make this larger up here, uh, and let's see how it works. Well, every time I call this function, I generate a random number so that my selection is, the value will hopefully be different. So let's say the value of this, my selection, is a 1. So I have a case here. So it says in case, or case, it's a 1, then make m name equal to do. Well, what's m name? Well, m name, if I look up here, is a string. So I'm going to set the string equal to do. Well, what do I do with that? Well, I always return the value of m name. Oh, that's how I do a function call up here, get name. 
it's going to return the value of whatever that was. What was it? Uh, dude. Okay. So now the name will be dude because that's what it's returning. So let's say now I I called it I called the uh, uh, that function again. And how do I call it again? Because I'm in a I'm in a for loop, man. I'm generating like uh, 50 monsters. I'm in this for loop here. So uh, every time it every time it calls that function, this function goes through the same thing. So if selection is now a three, it'll say case. No, it's not one. Case. No, it's not two. Case three. Yep, this is it. So M name is going to be Minky now. So it'll return Minky. And when it rolls a six, well, it'll that'll be the case. And it'll say, well, M name is equal to a caney, I guess that's how you pronounce it, and it'll return a caney. Now, what the fault means, the fault means if it's none of these values, the name will be dupey. So what I could do is I could make this range larger if I wanted to. All right, let's go look now at the, um, at the race. Okay. I'm using a switch statement at the race. One of the, th pardon me, one of the things to notice about the switch statement is that after my selection, it has an opening squiggly thing, and then it has a closing squiggly thing, all right? So you want to make sure the squiggly things are there. And this right here is, is a semicolon, and this is a colon after the case and the, the number value. And these are integers. These are integers. Okay, let's come down here. Get race. Get race, same thing. I have a string, a float, and an integer. I'm generating a random number. Now, let's look at this random number that I'm generating. Okay. So, the, the largest value this number can be, if this is a 1, it will be 1 times 9 plus 1 will be 10. So, my selection could be 10. The smallest value my selection could be would be 0 times 9 is 0 plus would be a 1. So, this value can go between 1 and 10. So, my selection has values from 1 to 10. Now, if you look at this, you see, wait a minute, there's case one with no break, there's case two with no break, and there's case, and no assignment, and there's case three that does have an assignment of org and then a break, it'll stop there. What's going on? Ah, what this means is, is that if I wind up with a random number of one, it will look at one and not see a break, so it falls to two, it doesn't see a break there, and no assignment. So it falls to three, and it says, oh, that's an orc. And then it has a break, so it'll stop. So what's happening here is what I'm saying is that for any number from one to three, the race is going to be an orc. Any number from one to three, the race will be an orc. Why? Because I didn't give any assignments here, and I didn't put a break. Now, let's look at this. If it's a four or a five, it's going to be a zombie. Oh, okay. If it's a six, it'll be a spider. Oh, so there's a one in ten chance that it'll be a spider. That's right. And the default is human. Oh, so in other words, for any value over six, it's going to be human. Yes. So how does this work in percentages? Well, let's see. I have three out of ten here, right? That's 30%. I have two out of ten here, 20% chance of being a zombie. I have one out of ten here a 10% chance of being a spider. And then I have the rest, which is what? Any number above 6, so that's 4 out of 10. That's a 40% chance of being a human. So here's how I can bias uh, my uh, selection using the switch statement. And of course, what we're really learning here is about how do you use the switch statement. OK, so let's go ahead and try this. Fingers crossed we know it always works right the first time. And we come here to my camera, and we have it on that script, and we're going to run it, and zoopy doo, and let's come over here. I'm going to hit the space bar and enlarge it, and let's see what we got. Let's see what we get. Okay, ID 1, it's an orc, a caney, age 151, 140. ID 2, it's a zombie. His name is Lumi, and age 122, and health uh, 229. ID 3, a race is a human. And his name is Akani again, ah, 17 years old. Oh, he's a youngster, health 58. Four, uh, uh, the race is a human. Uh, there's Minky, age 152. That's pretty old for a human. There's a health of 255. 
I think the race is an orc. Uh, the name is Fupi, Pupu, uh, and the age 106. The health is under 62. The ID is 6. Race is a human, age 44, uh, and so on. So I am randomly generating monsters. I'm randomly generating uh, their age, their health, uh, their name, and their race. And I've learned how to bias it. Uh, in favor of certain options. I could have done the same thing with the names and what have you. Okay, I, I hope you found this was helpful. Uh, that's it for this lesson. Uh, thank you for watching.